Hello, my name is Angie Finkel and this presentation is on pediatric head trauma. The purpose of this video is to define exactly what a pediatric head injury is, who are at risk, what diagnostic and assessment strategies are necessary to identify the disorder, what treatment modalities are expected, and the key teaching points that will aid in the management of this process. So let's get started. What exactly constitutes a pediatric head injury? A pediatric head injury is a broad term that is utilized in an effort to encompass injuries that are sustained from primary or secondary events that range in anatomical locations from superficial soft tissue injuries of the scalp or deep injuries that potentially extend to the skeletal structures resulting in skull fractures, neurovascular system involvement with injuries like concussions, contusions, epidural or subdural hematomas, or penetrating traumas. The primary injury is the direct or indirect result of a mechanism causing an injury. Secondary injuries are those injuries or insults that result from the primary event that include marked swelling, increased intracranial pressure, and systemic cascading events. So who is at risk and why? Pediatric patients are those patients who range in age from birth to 18 years of age, and in some primary care aspects, that age can extend to 21. Motor vehicle accidents represent a large degree of injury, and while child restraint devices are a necessary safeguard in the protection of this age group, oftentimes they are not utilized or utilized inappropriately. As the group matures and learns to operate these vehicles, aspects like texting and alcohol increase their risk. Pedestrian accidents are also another commonality that is found in this age group. Falls also attribute to a heightened degree of head injuries in the curious little ones. Recreational activities like sports also play a part in pediatric head injuries. Boys are taught to be tough and to win, and unfortunately this facet correlates with the statistical data that demonstrate why males are more likely to suffer from a head injury than their female counterparts. Assaults with projectile weapons of children who obtain access to guns or seek retribution on their peers is another source of head trauma incidences in the United States. And lastly, child abuse continues to sustain a high degree of head injuries in the pediatric population. So now that we have an understanding of what constitutes a pediatric head injury, who are at risk and why, three key diagnostic questions that are necessary to inquire about should a child present into the primary or acute care setting include, has the child suffered from a recent incident where a mechanism of injury was inflicted directly or indirectly to the child's head? Has there been any changes in mental status like abnormal sleepiness, confusion, lethargy, or alterations in mentation? And has the child complained of or suffered from any sign or symptom like headache, vomiting, blurred vision, slurred speech, or seizure event? Based off of these key questions, this will allow for us to have a heightened degree or index of suspicion that the patient has potentially suffered from a head injury and the potential progression of such. In relation to the three physical examination components that would assist in identifying the level of severity, the first assessment would surround the child's level of responsiveness by utilizing the pediatric Glasgow Coma Scale, which focuses on eye-opening, verbal response, and motor response. If the child's level of responsiveness is decreased, this would lean towards concussive or increased intracranial pressures within the cranial vault. Next, the head should be inspected and palpated for any lacerations, contusions, hematomas, bulging fontanelles, crepitus, or depressed areas of the skull. Each of the findings would be representative of aspects like hemorrhage, fractures, and increased intracranial pressure. Lastly, the eyes and ears should be assessed. The eyes have been said to be the window to the brain, and aspects like pupillary inequality and response have been associated with identifying if injuries exist. In relation to the ears, they too should be evaluated for drainage of blood or cerebral spinal fluid and hemotympanum presence. The progression of treatment will appear algorithmically and could be subject to change based upon assessment findings. Should the child's mental status be altered, the focus of treatment should be based on primary aspects like airway breathing, circulation, and minimizing primary injuries from progressing to secondary events and having the patient transported to an emergency department for definitive diagnostic evaluation and treatment. However, should the child suffer from minor injuries like superficial wounds, treatment would be focused on wound care and tetanus prophylaxis. If the child is suspected to have suffered from a concussive event and has a normal pediatric Glasgow coma scale, the child can be sent home with a parent or guardian who has been educated on observational aspects. Should the child complain of headache, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories can be prescribed. And in the event that the child abuse is suspected, mandatory reporting of suspicion should be reported to the appropriate state entity. Outcomes for minor head injuries will include return for wound check and potential suture removal and uneventful, unprogressive resolve of concussive insults. Pediatric head injuries within the primary care setting will require a variable degree of teaching based upon the level of insult. However, three priority teaching aspects that should be expressed in minor pediatric head injury events include the importance of keeping superficial wounds clean and dry, monitoring the child for progressive secondary injuries like alteration of mental status, vomiting or seizures, and lastly, to follow up with a healthcare provider for either routine wound management to ensure adequate wound healing that is free from infection, or to follow up for progressive secondary symptomology that may present and demonstrate worsening of the child's condition. Well, this concludes our objectives. I hope you enjoyed the quick synopsis and have a better understanding of pediatric head injuries. Thank you for listening, and War Eagle.